This is Steven Diego and you are tuned in to Breaking Down the Breakdown. On today's episode, we are going to talk about how we handle rejection. Hello everyone, welcome in to another week of Breaking Down the Breakdown with me, Steven Diego. How is everybody doing? Um, I hope your um, month has been great. We are halfway through June already. We're halfway through the year. Are you fucking kidding me? 2024 just started. What is going on? What the fuck have I been doing? Anyways, welcome in to everybody listening right now. This is a super special, super special edition this whole month. Um, Yes, it's Pride Month. Yes, I know that. I get it, like what I said last episode. Um, But don't you worry. Don't you worry. The topics are not just about being, you know, LGBT or whatever, right? But rather, especially with today's episode, I wanted to talk about something. I don't even know if I actually talked about this before. Maybe I have and I just forgot about it, you know. I've been doing this for six seasons. I don't remember the shit I talk about sometimes. But something super important came to me. And I remember back in my heyday, you know, whenever festivals like these would happen, whenever Pride would be around or like mostly Pride, um, you know, as a person who was a serial, I don't want to say dater because I didn't really date a lot of people. I hooked up a lot, a serial hooker upper. I don't know what the fuck you call that. A slut, I guess, you know, as a serial slut. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's nothing bad about that, okay? As long as you're not hurting anybody. That's that's what I'm that's why I always say, as long as you're not hurting anyone, you're good. Um but as somebody who used to sleep around a lot, um you know, especially during Pride month, a lot of people are kind of like out to experiment, out to explore and you know, maybe in the straight world this is just a regular occurrence. Uh, maybe in other people's lives this is actually just a regular occurrence. But maybe it's me. Maybe it's a me thing where I'm a lot more active during Pride. But you know, not not lately. No, I'm like, I'm like a saint. Um, but I remember back in the day <laughs> when I used to get around. Um, it's also during this time where I get rejected a lot. Now, that is not to say I don't get rejected a lot in the first place. I do, okay? I feel like a lot of us, maybe there's a few people who are like, rejection, don't know her. Rejection, yeah, I always reject people. And good for y'all, you know? I wish I had your level of charisma or, you know, good looks or just whatever the fuck it is that you have that allows you to be the one to reject people. But unfortunately for me, I'm always the one who gets rejected. I'm always the one who gets left behind. I'm always the one who gets broken up with. I'm always the one left broken hearted. Now, I'm, this is not about that. Maybe it is a little bit, a little bit. Yes, it does intertwine. I wanted to talk about rejection today. And <sighs> it's, a, it's a tough one for me to talk about because admittedly so, I hate being rejected. I mean, who doesn't, right? But a lot of us differ in how we handle it. I'm not here to tell you how you should handle it, right? I'm here to tell you maybe how you can handle it a little better. I know so many people that when they get rejected, they go through a cycle, And, you know, it's kind of like different steps, right? First of all, you're in denial. (laughs) Yes, you got rejected. What are you in denial about? Well, for a lot of us, our pride gets hurt. So oftentimes, right, especially in the, you know, gay community, you don't even get rejected by them saying, oh, sorry, this is not working out or, oh, I'm so sorry, you're just not what I'm looking for. There is something called the block button or there is something called leaving you on red. And a lot of times, especially when we get left on red, right? When we like somebody, 
and this isn't like the, the it's different. It's like stages to it, right? There's left you on red right away. At that moment, you already know. You fucking know, right? And the denial part comes in the sense that you're not denying that you got rejected, right? But rather, you're denying the fact that they just don't like you. Does that make any sense? You know they don't like you, but people get super aggressive about it. Like they have the entire world to prove that they were they did not deserve to get rejected. That it's their loss, da 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 da. And I'm not saying it's not, right? But at the at the end of the day, if you flip it around, how many times have you done that to other people? How many times have you kind of rejected people without even letting them know they're rejected by just leaving them on red, right? Yet when it happens to you, you don't like it. And all of a sudden, you're in the offense and you're all like, you know, whatever, fuck it. Like, I'm better than this shit. I'm better than them. Look at them anyway. Da, 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 da. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say there, right? So maybe not denial is the word. Well, I don't know. I feel like you are denying the fact that, like, you got rejected and you're just kind of like, just deal with it, right? Like, it's it's okay. The person didn't like you. Whatever. Moving on. Because it's not like you're not talking to five other people. And I think, especially in the community, that's kind of something that a lot of us tend to do. And there's nothing wrong with talking to more than one person at all. You're just talking. There's nothing wrong with getting to know more than one person. At least for me, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, right? Especially when you're in like apps like grinder or like i don't even know any other apps anymore but there is nothing wrong with that right you're single or in an open relationship and you're ready to mingle ready to have fun i mean of course you're going to cast a wide net and see which fishes you pick up right and you know some of them will you know be like nope some of them will be like nope to you and some of them you'll have endless chats with. And some of them you'll actually meet in the next 20 minutes. And that's just how life is, right? I think a lot of us, when these rejections happen, there's a lot of factors that go in. The kind of rejection I was talking about just now, not a lot of people tend to dwell on, right? But the reaction that we have can actually carry over to how we are going to deal with the second level of rejection, right? And by that, I don't mean from the same person. I mean, have you guys ever talked to people and thought that things were going so well, right? And then all of a sudden, seemingly like no clue, like 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 no warning, they just pow, disappear. And I don't mean like, Well, they could have blocked you too and you don't know what you did. Or they could just start leaving you on red. And for that last part, there are usually signs that they're losing interest, right? Because that's, I feel like, a lot of us do experience that. And again, this is so universal. It's not just within the community. I know so many of my straight friends that this has happened to. You know, they're they're in dating phases and... They were so interested in each other, and all of a sudden, the interest just wanes. You have so much in common, yet the conversations start to get so dry, or you just kind of start talking about the same things over and over and over again. And that that's kind of unexplainable, right? Like, sometimes it just fucking happens. Yet, there will always be one person who will get hurt over that. Some In some cases, it could be mutual, but... You're not really dwelling on that if it's mutual. There are a lot of cases in which either you like them so much or they like you so much, but you're just kind of like, actually, this is just not meshing. And some people are decent enough to be able to say, hey, look, I'm sorry. Actually, I don't think this is going to work. That's fine. I actually commend people uh, you know, who are able to do that because it's very hard. It's hard to be honest because you're hurting people's feelings. But 
why is it better to hurt other people's feelings by just disappearing? I will never understand that. I will never get that from people. Um, you know, maybe because they get so different. I don't fucking know. I'm just trying to like dig through my brain because there's been so many instances in which people just stop talking to me. I feel like maybe I just talk about so much in the first 48 hours that, you know, on the third day, they're just kind of like, well, now I know everything I need to know about this person. Mm, okay. And that's it. Right. And it's tough. It's really tough. Now, the next thing I'm going to say here might trigger a lot of you because you might actually be like me. <sighs> All right, here it goes. This is not fun for me to talk about, but I tend to be the type in which I actually don't really send out, you know, like not right away. I don't send out nudes right away. Okay. It's either only sent out if I really like a person or if I feel like we're going to, you know, if, or we hit it off or whatever. Or there is also that part in which I kind of use it as a weapon. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say it like that, but I am going to say it like that. Maybe not weapon, but it's kind of like my last hurrah. <laughs> and I don't know how many of you do this. Right. And no, hey, I'm not judging you if you do this. I'm just saying maybe let's reevaluate why we're doing this. But I've have I've had instances in which when I feel like the other person is starting to lose interest, that's when I go send nudes. Not to them. I mean I just, you know, get it ready and I say, hey. Can I send you something kind of sexy slash hot? More often than not, they'll say yes, right? Nobody likes unsolicited nudes unless, you know, that's what you actually are looking for. But especially when they get serious, you know, that's when they kind of like, ooh, and their ears perk up. And depending on the reaction, it buys you a week or two. And for you, you feel like in those two weeks, that's when it really begins. That's when you're like, okay, I need to turn this around because I really like this person. And I can't believe that they were starting to, you know, ghost me and they're going to see how sexy I am. And I'm going to be, it's going to be the hottest thing ever. And so for the next two weeks, right, depending on who you talk to, you end up exchanging nudes and it speeds up the process of meeting up. So you meet up and everything is great. But because you have had this mini game in your head that, well, because I was able to sleep with them and it was such a great time. haha. You know, now they probably like me a lot more. Only for you to find out that it was a great time. But it's just not it for them. And then you start to get really angry because you just felt like you were used. In some cases, actually, there are a lot of cases in which people use people, right? I get that. But in this particular case, and I've been in this position before, this is why I'm talking about it. It was hard to really stomach the fact that I actually put myself in this position. And at the end of the day, I end up crying. And I start feeling like I'm not worthy of anything. My self-confidence takes a huge hit. I feel like I gave everything to someone who didn't even really, really care about it. But I... The fault here lies within the fact that I wasn't able to read in between the lines. I'm not psychic, right? It's not about that, right? And not everybody should have to be like overanalyzing a situation or a context. But yet, if you think about it, 
with my example, instead of just being upfront, I decided to play a game. It was almost as if I changed the course of the conversation by turning it into something more sexual. And so for the other person, they picked it up as, oh, okay, so they want to just fuck. But because I came into this conversation between, between me and this other individual, you know, developing it into more of a romantic aspect of it, I end up losing sight of that. Not sight of the romantic aspect, but losing sight of what I had just done. I changed the conversation into something else. And for them, you know, for a lot of people, like, obviously, like, if there's an initial attraction right away, right, it's going to be sexual. And if they think that you're game for these things and they're game too, of course, they'll, they'll jump on the chance, right? They find you attractive. But see, these are things that once the heartbreak happens, once the rejection happens, we end up really hating ourselves and just rethink the worst things about us. First of all, the interaction happened because you're hot. They found you so attractive. And you offered. Because you wanted to do stuff with them too. That has nothing to do with you not being enough. The rejection had nothing to do with you not being good enough for anyone at all. It was because you already knew before you had slept with them that that other person wasn't interested anymore. And you couldn't handle that. You didn't want to admit or accept it. So you wanted to do other things to keep them. Sometimes truly letting go is the best course of action. Because, you know, first of all, it'll speed up the process of hopefully meeting somebody else that would really appreciate you for everything you have to offer without having to resort to that. And no, this is not slut shaming people. This is different. This is talking about rejection for when you actually are in the, in too deep in a conversation or like a, you know, in the talking stages with someone and you do everything just to keep them there or try to keep them there. I hope you don't feel like I'm lecturing you because this is literally me talking to myself right now, right? These are experiences I've had. These are reactions I've had. And this is how I felt after every single time that I've done this. Because at the end of it, the common denominator is me. But instead of being able to accept the fact that the common denominator actually are my actions and how I try to change the conversation to try and hopefully get them to like me more, I end up pinpointing the most negative things I can think of about me, my insecurities, and I blame those. I blame those things for having, you know, for, for the, as being the reason why people don't want to stay, why people are not interested, why people only want to sleep with me and nothing more. And years and years and years of that. This is actually why I, you know, like confidence has got to be one of the things I'm lacking. A lot of people, you know, they think I'm very confident because I'm able to post things online or like, you know, say things or sing on stage. <laughs> if you knew me, it's actually very hard because I, I seem confident, but I'm really, I don't say I'm not. I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to believe in myself again, but I, gosh, I wish I could say I look in the mirror and I'm like, you're good. That doesn't happen. 
Instead, I look in the mirror, and I combat the intrusive thoughts, analyzing my face and what's wrong with my body, what's wrong with my face, what's wrong with me, and that's my daily routine. You know, I get up, I go to the, I go to the washroom, I look in the mirror. Sometimes I cry because I don't like what I see. And then I snap out of it because I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you know, like, what am I doing? Why am I making myself feel bad? This is who I am. This is what I look like. I, I love myself. I need to accept this, right? Very tough. But this is what years and years and years of dealing with rejection the wrong way brings you. It's so easy for some people to be able to say, well, I'm just not their type and move on. And I truly wish people like me, you know, like people like us, I, I truly wish we can get to that point. And I know we will, right? But there are so many factors that play into this, which is why I want to talk about this today. After listening to this or during, I want you to ask yourself, do you handle rejection the way that I do? In which if I know I'm about to be rejected, I try to offer them something a lot more saucy and spicy that they cannot refuse the offer. And I try to do so good in bed that they're not going to forget about me. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie to you. You know, like I've I've met people that I, I slept with like years ago and they're like, oh, do you remember that night? And even for me, sometimes it's kind of like, I actually don't. But then there were times where I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And they still talk about it like it was yesterday. It was so hot. But guess what? They're not interested in me. They never were. Not in that sense. Right? It was just a fling. And it was it was a good time for them. And I finally gotten to the point where I've accepted that. Before, whenever I would hear these stories from people, I would feel a little offended. Because to that, uh, sorry, to me, they were kind of, I don't want to say my everything, but they were like my favorite people in the world. And I really wanted to be with them. And I decided to give all of me. And in return, it was one, two, three, four, maybe five nights of fun. And that was it. Five nights at Freddy's. Hell yeah. <laughs> but that was it. And I beat myself up for years. And over what? over people having a good time. This is what's really dangerous about not understanding rejection. We never look at it from the other standpoint either. When we reject people, how it makes them feel, because for us it makes sense. But at the same time, let me just you know, let me just take a step back because some of us actually reject people properly, right? We are able to say, hey, look, it's just not going to work out. It's just not working out, period. That's it, right? From the get-go. Or even midway through it, we realize, hey, look, we really gave it a shot and it's that's it, right? But even during that, no matter how well you word it, the other person still gets hurt. And a lot of us are, at least I've met people that are compassionate about that, right? They're, they're, you know, they, they're not assholes about it. But you can't help it. The rejectee will still feel some type of way. And they still end up blaming themselves. If they don't know how to handle rejection or they don't have, you know, enough practice with self-love, which is very hard, especially in society nowadays with everything that goes on, right? And my point is, while you're listening to this, <laughs> and, you know, after listening to this, I want you guys to truly bring yourself back to a time in which you knew that it just wasn't going to work out. And the person was just so done but you decided to just pull out everything to try and see if they can still like you. I want you to remember if it worked, if it didn't work, and if it worked temporarily, 
maybe hey maybe it was actually just what you needed to do and they were like bam in love married now <laughs> right sometimes that happens that way sometimes the person don't know that what they're missing is that kind of intimacy with someone that's why i'm saying i'm not shaming y'all if this is what you do if this is your tactic no shame but i don't want you to hate yourself or to feel hurt if it doesn't work out even after this because that has nothing to do with you you can't make somebody else love you like you it's just not going to happen as painful as that is to hear and it's so easy to hold on to but we had such a great time it was amazing fuck the conversations were so fucking good we were so hot and sexy together what did i do wrong you did nothing wrong as hard as that is to understand maybe the other person was just looking for a temporary thing you know and had some post nut clarity and was like oh crap maybe i just talked a little too deep with this person now now they're hooked on me but i'm not into it like that kind of shitty if they don't say it to you after i will say that but that has nothing to do with you hey i'm just here to empower y'all especially my fellow lgbtq plus earth during pride month because there are going to be tons of rejection at the clubs this <laughs> these coming two weeks or during the apps and i just want y'all to just hold on to yourselves it is not you if they're not into you go 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 find somebody else hurry there is someone out there for you who will appreciate you who will love your body from head to toe your personality who will love your face who will love your you know your parts all of it don't force yourself into a hole if you're a square peg unless you lube it up no I'm kidding I'm being for real though rejection is bound to happen rejection unfortunately is so common but what's also common is how much you lash out at yourself whenever you get rejected and that needs to stop just always remember especially for people who get past the scene zone stage you got to the point where the conversations were great it just wasn't with the right person you can do it again but this has been breaking down the breakdown if you guys want to talk about your rejection stories with me absolutely message me dm me breaking down the breakdown pod on instagram right or email me breaking down the breakdown at outlook.com i love you guys so much please be safe but have fun especially during this pride month and i don't mean just with the sex you know there's been an alarming rate of anti lgbt hate out there um man it's not really safe out there anymore but just know that you're loved no matter what happens remember to love yourself because there are so many people who see the amazing stuff they have to offer unfortunately you're showing it to the wrong people <laughs> but be kind be compassionate i love you all thank you so much for being here i'll talk to y'all later goodbye